This is the Happen to Your Career podcast with Scott Anthony Barlow. We hope you stop doing work that doesn't fit you, figure out what does, and make it happen. We help you define the work that is unapologetically you and then go get it. If you feel like you were meant for more and you're ready to make a change, keep listening. Here's Scott. Here's Scott. Here's Scott. You've probably seen the headlines. Job openings fall to pre-pandemic levels as U.S. labor market continues to cool down. Right? There's a scary one. That one's pretty recent. Just just came out uh, close to the time of this recording. Or here's another good one. It's the economy created just 12,000 jobs last month. The smallest gain since 2020. That sounds pretty, pretty scary, right? And uh, that's, that's a thing that happens. These are, I mean, these are real headlines that I just quoted to you. But no matter when you're listening to this episode, whether it is, you know, at the time of this recording or, you know, many years in the future, there's probably going to be some kind of discouraging news about jobs and making its way to you. Layoffs are up. Hiring is down. Not exactly inspiring, right? And you might feel like now is the worst possible time to make a career change. Here's the thing. That line of thinking is counterproductive and it's simply not true for what is going on with you as an individual. Uh, if you base your decision on what's happening to the majority, you're missing the smaller picture. Yes, the general trends, the big picture print trends sound bleak, but those trends don't actually dictate what is happening to you as an individual. In this episode, I want to I want to address a question that we get all the time. And the question usually sounds like is now a great time to look for a job with, with the layoffs, which what's happening in the economy with what's happening in the market with it, whatever, whatever happens to be going on at that, that particular time, it causes people to raise these questions. Like, should I even try? Well, also in this episode, I want to let you in on some of the things that I've learned from many of my past experiences, past roles, past careers, you could say past lives. I don't know where I got to work closely with how the reporting actually happens up to, at least in the U S the, the Bureau of labor statistics. So I was really fortunate where I actually got to work in on, uh, I got to work, you know, actually reporting some of that information from different companies that I worked with. I often was, or my departments were responsible for reporting that information. So I got to see like how that was calculated in various different organizations and also what mistakes were made on accident and also what wasn't calculated and also what is misleading during some of those calculations. And at the same time, also got to work with the economists that gather that data and process that data and analyze that data and share it up with the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So I've gotten to see all of those different sides. And I got to tell you that uh, you're not getting the full story when you see those headlines. That I can promise. But before we go into that, I want to make one other point here. If you're looking for, let's say, 20,000 or 50,000 jobs, then you should definitely pay attention to those statistics, pay attention to those headlines. But if you're like most people that we get to work with, then you're probably just looking for one job. I don't know, maybe two. Those stats don't actually mean as much as you think that they do. When you are an individual, that is very, very different from looking at the, the market trends. So, so many people tend to make the mistake of thinking that what is happening in the general market will specifically impact my chances as an individual. And what I find is that uh, if you're looking for entry level jobs, uh, then that can that can be very very true. However, uh, as you get later and later into your career, and you have more and more of different types of experiences to offer, these statistics just matter so much less than than <laughs> what uh, what most people think. So, I, I want to share a few different things. 
you know, first of all, let's say these numbers, the, the layoffs, the job creation stats, they're broad strokes. They're meant to summarize the big picture for entire industries, regions, states, or the whole country. And this, this is the logic uh, that will get you in trouble if you are paying attention to that. And it will discourage you. It will change your mindset for how you're searching for what you, you want um, as it relates to your life and your career and paying attention to those and giving, uh, giving those headlines and statistics uh, a lot of weight will literally change what you believe is possible for yourself. So from here on out, I would encourage you to not pay attention to them at all, or at least not in the same way at a minimum. What, what can be clear is that you're not getting the, the full story. So let's come back to my experiences here when getting to work on all different sides of how this information gets reported up. One of the things that uh, people don't realize is that it's usually pretty simplistic information. It's usually based on uh, how many openings did you have uh, as an organization? How many openings did you fill? How many new people did you hire? How many people uh, were removed from your organization or, you know, terminated, not necessarily in, you know, firings, but just meaning that they left your organization in one way or another. So they're essentially tracking the overall broad brush movement of what's happening within the economy. How many people are employed at uh, different organizations? You know, how many people are, (laughs) how many people are potentially going to be hired? Uh, You know, how many openings do we have? Uh, What is, how many of those are getting filled? All the information like that. Here's what doesn't get represented. What doesn't get represented and lost in that information is how many openings that, uh, you know, in a given month, because you typically will report this either monthly or quarterly, uh, this information, and that goes up to typically your state's, uh, your state's agency and whatever economists are working within that agency that reports up through the the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Uh, so it works a little bit differently for every state and every agency looks a little bit different in every state, at least here in the U.S. Um, but that said, when let's say that this situation happens, let's say that you decide that you're going to bring somebody on board that you didn't have a specific job posting for or that you created a job posting for after uh, you know, afterwards, which happens in organizations all the time. And even in large organizations, even in highly policied organizations, even in highly regulated organizations, we've seen it all. We've done it all. Uh, I promise you it is happening. Does it look the same in every situation? No, it's drastically different. That said, uh, that information is not represented there. There's no place to report, hey, we didn't realize we're going to hire this person and we created a new job opening. All that just gets buried in all those other statistics. Even though that sort of thing happens, and certainly that happens with many of our clients, we get to see it you know, every single day, uh, it gets lost. It gets lost in those overall statistics. Instead, we just see the headline. The headline that says, hey, Jobs and job creation went down. Okay. So now we know that the headlines don't reflect the reality for what's happening for individuals like you. Another way to think about making a career change during times like this, when most people believe is something is impossible is that's where the opportunities are. Um, way back, if we go back to COVID, one of the things that I predicted would happen is that Almost by the time it got into September 2020, all the people that were sitting and waiting to see would create this huge flood of competition. Uh, it was it was so easy to see that coming, and it was really difficult to actually convince individuals that hey, now uh, was one of the best times where no, yes, there were less organizations hiring, but. Also, there was nobody looking in so many different ways, comparatively or relatively, I guess I should say. Um, the other, the other thing to consider here is that this is going to continue to happen. We're going to see other variations. Hopefully, it's not associated with a pandemic, but we're going to see other fluctuations of the economy. And those times where situations are down, that causes the vast majority of people to stop trying which means that that creates opportunity for you also as an individual. 
Again, we're not talking about overall markets here. You're one person, you need one job. Maybe two, maybe three. I don't know, maybe you're ambitious. Okay, so when people are seeing the headlines and deciding to sit out entirely, that's where there's less competition. Even for the roles that are still open. Even in slow markets, companies still hire for critical roles. This happens. It we're still having fluctuation. That's another thing that uh, that realized that I realized as I was getting to work with all of these different types of uh, reporting on all different sides. Is there still fluctuation? People are still leaving. Uh, critical roles are still getting filled. Maybe less roles overall are getting filled, but they're still going to be critical roles. They might not be adding hundreds of positions, but roles are going to still be filling uh, often strategic long-term investments in the right people. That's usually what is taking place. So hiring trends don't apply to every industry. That's another factor here. Many niche skills are not affected by the larger trends. Okay. So we've established maybe the headlines are bad. Jobs are down. It appears as nobody's getting hired, whatever it is that you're hearing. But here's the question I would leave you with. Why can't you be the exception? Why not you? Why can't you be the individual that gets hired? It's going to happen. I promise we do this every single day and it might as well be you. So I, of course, you know, if you've listened to this podcast, like this is literally the reason that we are in existence. Our, our company is created is to help people find work that fits and create a ripple impact so that quite frankly, more of the world is able to thrive in their work. So if you've been thinking about making a career change, don't let the noise of the job market discourage you. The sooner you start, the sooner you're going to be able to make your move. That's what we see. That's really what matters. It's that whole, when's the best time to plant a tree thing. And who knows, you might find the opportunity you've been waiting for while everybody else is sitting on the sidelines. So instead of asking, is now a good time to look for a job? Ask yourself, why not now? If that's something you want help with, we're always ready to help. Uh, we can help you begin taking steps towards and figuring out what, uh, what you want. So here's what I would suggest. Just drop me an email directly, scott at happentoyourcareer.com. Put conversation in the subject line. When you do that, I can introduce you to the right member of our team and we'll figure out the very best way that we can help, help you, support you that aligns with your goals, whatever that looks like, and the very best way that, uh, that we can help make that happen. All right, drop me an email right now, conversation in the subject line. Until next time, I am out. Adios. Thank you.